Okay, so for our next presentation, um, our presenter has been involved in uh, alternative science research for uh, quite a long time, uh, going back probably even before the Borderland, or at least when he was involved with the Borderland Science Research Foundation with Eric Dollard and, and some others, and he had been involved with uh, actually publish, helping to publish and authoring uh, books and videos that are some of the classics that probably a lot of you know about that you can find on YouTube, on our own websites. And uh, he had actually known uh, John Bedini uh, sometime back in the 80s, visited you know, maybe a couple of his labs down in California to document some of uh, Bedini's work on the Cromery generator, which is, I believe, the horizontal shaft one. And, and in about uh, 2004 or so, somewhere around there, Peter moved down to uh, uh, the Spokane area from uh, northern Washington to work with John Bedini for about a, a year, and that was uh, during the development of a lot of the commercially available battery chargers, rejuvenators, and solar charge controllers that were uh, developed at uh, uh, John Bedini's company uh, back then. And uh, he has been involved in you know everything from uh, not only alternative energy, uh, health, and consciousness, and a lot of different um, topics, and a lot of you if you're kind of new to this, probably see that a lot of these topics kind of go together because you can't really separate them. And a lot of us that are into this are interested in all of those. Um, this uh, motor right here um, is a uh, uh, called a glass case motor. And in 2015, John Bedini brought this out into the public for the first time. Not this one, but the one he actually had in a glass case to the uh, Hayden Eagles Lodge downtown and demonstrated it. But still, he had never really revealed any details about it, he let people look at it, and if people didn't ask any questions about it, he didn't really volunteer any information about what it actually was. So we kind of know, at that time, kind of knew uh, some of the details, and then of course, as you know, he passed in uh, November 2016, and we thought we would never see it again, um, and we're very grateful to John Bedini's family for letting uh, Peter Lindemann and I uh, investigate this uh, maybe around March uh, over on the uh, Seattle side. Do our best to document it. Uh, Peter has a much stronger grasp of a lot of the principles um, than you know mo most people because he spent uh, uh, quite a bit of time with John and knows a lot of the in and outs and a lot of the history that a lot of uh, people do not know about John Bedini's past and where these kind of ideas come from. Uh, but this is a perfect uh, Mike Clark's or, uh, presentation on air core motors, kind of the perfect segue into this presentation, because this is kind of where, where it all started, or at least one of the starting points for John. So uh, please help me welcome uh, Peter Lindemann. We have never heard the name of this machine. We called it the glass case motor because it was the motor that was in the glass case. But John called it the gravity wave space flux motor. And we found that out after he died. And in a box, we found a manuscript. He was writing a book on this. And it was unfinished. And uh, Aaron is in the process of compiling and finishing this book and that book is going to become available. And so our um, project to replicate and learn everything we could about this is all part of this project. So this is, this is step one of an ongoing disclosure about what this technology is, where it come from, and where it can take us. So here's John in uh, 2015 um, demonstrating the, the motor for the first time in public. Um, it was quite a day, I remember. Uh, we had uh, um, brown paper over, over this thing, and we, it just was brought in. It looked like a little brown box, and he ripped the paper off. and, and uh, he talked about it for a while and ran it for people. Um, I had seen this motor running uh, in, his, in his office, in his lab. 
up, upstairs, usually above the lab floor in many of the buildings where, I, uh, where he had a lab at, at the time in Coeur d'Alene. Um, this was among a series of machines we simply called the museum. Because what John did in his um, learning process, he never, ever, ever took a, a working machine apart to use the parts for, for the next experiment. He built something. If it worked, he put it on the shelf. And if he wanted to try something just even slightly different, he built another one and another one and another one. He had the largest museum of working machines I have ever seen from any inventor. So the source materials for this presentation um, go back to the beginning of where these ideas come from, which are, are rooted in the, in the prior work of Joe Newman. Um, we also, I also lean pretty heavily into John's unfinished book manuscript, which I have had access to, and measurements taken from the original machine, which Aaron said we went and saw in Tacoma, Washington in early March, just before the lockdown. This is the uh, cover of the eighth edition of the Energy Machine of Joe Newman. This is the book that he compiled. Uh, this was the last edition before he died. And I draw upon this. The reason I'm presenting this material first is that you will see in Joe Newman's work the beginnings of almost everything that is here. John wa studied Joe Newman's work. He could never say he was a student of Joe Newman because if you said that and you hadn't actually visited him, he would tear your head off. In, in the early days, in the 60s, Joe Newman uh, was, to be polite, a bully. A little machine like this is perturbing the Earth's magnetic field. And there are effects from this. And so every, everything that is operating within a, a, a magnetic field is embedded in the next larger magnetic field, is embedded in the next larger magnetic field, and everything that operates on magnetism is an open system to the greater environment. Here he shows other drawings about uh, the, how the Earth's magnetic field is, is interfacing with the sun and so on, and even all the other planets, how the, the magnetic lines of force from the sun are cutting through at these odd angles. This was, this was Joe's you know, universal theory of magnetism. Okay, so here, here we're coming together. He's adding the flywheel. He's showing you know, the, the relationship of the, the coils, the motor coil and the generator coil. Frame. And again, He's now, he, now he's showing himself the, the spins, of the field spins around the wires and how they're relating to the rotor as it moves by. Same thing here, the spins around the, the wires, spins around the wires, spins around the wires. Yeah, and what, 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 what's happening as, as we have gotten deeper into the, the batteries when we started you could see basically just a, a flux, a, just what seemed like a random fluctuation of the numbers on the digital screen, like you were just running into a standard digital sampling, you know, rate a fluctuation against uh, when the thing was firing. So that that would look random, uh, but after a while, what started happening? was that you could see this very 
slow sine wave uh, of values going through the, what the meter was reading. In other words, a, a much slower, uh, easy to sample uh, voltage fluctuation in the batteries.